My dear friends in Christ, the beautiful feast that we celebrate today is of fairly recent origin. Of course, we know that our Blessed Mother has been the Mother of God since the Incarnation, but this feast, as we know it, was only established as of 1931. This was Pope Pius XI, who established this feast to honor the 15 hundred year anniversary of the conclusion of the Council of Ephesus in 431. And this was a very important council. One of the chief products of this council was the condemnation of Nestorius. Nestorius was a heretic who taught erroneously that Christ had his human nature and divine nature, but there was no such thing as hypostatic union, is what Nestorius taught. And one of the conclusions of this false teaching was that the Blessed Virgin was the mother of Christ the human, and in no way was she, therefore, the mother of God. The church definitively condemned this error. And one of the results of this council was the coining, we might say, of the phrase theotokos, a Greek term meaning the mother of God. This was now our Blessed Mother's title, theotokos, Truly, she was the mother of God. And this title, we might say, uh, we, we follow the fathers of the church and the holy writers. This title is the greatest of our blessed mother's titles. Because all of her other prerogatives, all of her other titles stem from this prerogative, that she was indeed the mother of God. God gave her her immaculate conception. She was immaculately conceived. But it was because she was to be the mother of God. So we should... Honor our dear mother today in a very special way, invoking her under this title, Mother. Now, in order to love someone, we have to know that person. We, of course, say we love our blessed mother, but how how well do we know our Blessed Mother? There are problems that could be brought up. Well, how do you get to know someone if you can't speak with them? We can pray to our Blessed Mother, but she doesn't talk back. So is it even possible to get to know our dear Mother? The answer is yes, it certainly is possible. It has been God's pleasure to reveal to us His Holy Mother, to give mountains of details, in fact, about her, that we might know His greatest creation. He puts her on a pedestal above all the angels and all of the saints, that she might magnify the dazzling light of her Son, that we all might be able to see. We can indeed know Mary. We can know her more fully, in fact, than we can know the closest of our best friends. First, what is in Scripture is rather small. There isn't 
very much in Scripture about our Blessed Mother, but what is there is replete with information. Every line is full of a very, very deep meaning. And the saints, the fathers of the church, have expounded greatly on Scripture regarding our Blessed Mother. And besides for this, our dear mother has shown herself to us throughout the centuries many, many times in apparitions. This private revelation approved apparitions, revelations, give us a treasure trove of information about our Blessed Mother. But what is even more than both of these things is the fact that if a soul is truly desiring, if we are really striving to know Mary, we will be given every possible help by our Lord, who desires that we come to him through his mother. He will enlighten our minds to know our dear mother. But what do we know about Mary, or at least what can we say about her today? There are books, books upon books about our Blessed Mother. Even the one, perhaps one of the most famous books, The Glories of Mary by St. Alphonsus, is a very, very thick book. And a person, no doubt, could spend a, a lifetime learning, speaking, expounding on our Blessed Mother. But I want to talk about just one of her virtues today, and that is her charity. Because more than any other virtue, this virtue makes her motherly. There is... Uh, particular story in sacred scripture that brings into uh, contrast, I suppose we could say. It brings before us very clearly our Blessed Mother's mother-like charity. It's something that mothers do, I think, to, to take care of the, the nitty-gritty to make sure that all of the plans are taken care of. There are a lot of little details that dads maybe don't think about. But a mother always has these little things in mind. This was the case in the story we read in Scripture of the wedding feast of Cana. And we know, we know this story, I'm sure, very well. They were invited to a wedding feast. And our Blessed Mother noticed something. Her attentive eye realized that they were about to run out of wine. And this would be a very embarrassing thing for the bride and the groom. So before it was even came to the attention of the stewards, she addressed her son. This is a very wonderfully human side of our Blessed Mother, that she truly is solicitous for our own needs, just as she was solicitous for this couple. It was a small thing. It wouldn't have been the end of the world if they ran out of wine. It was just a little favor, but this little act of kindness, this little act of care for her children was the occasion for the working of our Lord's very first public miracle. I think that this is to bring before us very clearly the love that our Blessed Mother has for us, the charity that is 
native to her. Her love for us, of course, is founded in her love for Almighty God, that there is one great commandment. A lawyer asked our Lord one time, what is the greatest commandment? The answer is to love the Lord thy God with thy whole mind and with thy whole heart and with thy whole strength. But the second is like to this, to love your neighbor as yourself. So yes, our blessed mother's love is founded on that first great law, that she truly loved Almighty God with her whole mind, heart, and strength. But she was quick, as our Lord, it was quick to follow up this great commandment, to love thy neighbor as thyself. Our Blessed Mother truly loves us very dearly. It's an interesting question, perhaps, and this was sort of a, a, a query, a, a question by St. Catherine of Genoa. We might think that if if our Blessed Mother was so consumed, her every thought was about Almighty God, if her every fiber was consumed with Him, how could she have place, how could she have time to love us? And our Lord explained this answer one day to St. Catherine of Genoa when she had a similar question. St. Catherine said, Lord, Thou willest that I should love my neighbor, and I can love none but thee. And he answered very simply, All who love me love what I love. Since there was never a creature who ever loved God as much as our Blessed Mother, so no one ever loved mankind as much as she did, as much as she does. Now, we know that our one goal, our, our chief purpose in life is to love Jesus Christ. Our, our life goal is to know and to imitate Him. And this is where we need to understand devotion to our Blessed Mother correctly. It's a common thing that is brought up by Protestants. Will you worship Mary? And even if they don't go so far as to say that we worship Mary, well, we overemphasize. We put way too much emphasis on our Blessed Mother, and it's not right. We should be thinking about Christ. And this is true. Christ is the center of our world. He is our everything. But if we are seeking Christ, we can be certain he will be with his mother. St. Louis de Montfort explains this so very clearly and logically, that God has willed that we approach him by means of his mother. She is our advocate with Christ just as Christ is advocate with the Father. When our mother asks, or even if we ask in her name, Christ will never refuse. The interests of Mary and the interests of God are interchangeable. They are one and the same. If we know her, we know Almighty God. Those that love God love what God loves, remember. So let us go to our Blessed Mother. Let us strive to know her more and more. Read about her whenever we can. Those lines from Scripture. There's a lot of beautiful literature about our Blessed Mother. 
If you haven't read The Glories of Mary by St. Alfonso Liguori, I highly suggest it. We should try to know her, thereby knowing her son all the better. Let us always go to her for intercession. Truly, as a child, the, the uh, vestment today has a, an image of Our Lady of Guadalupe. And this is one of the more consoling of our Blessed Mother's apparitions. There's one line that is so tender. She spoke to Juan Diego. Am I not here who am your mother? She is always there for us. So let us do our part. Let us do our part and seek her out and come to know her better. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, amen.